Hello everybody, my name is Ahmed Mirza. I'm a family nurse practitioner, and today I wanna to talk about how a nurse practitioner can work in the emergency department. A lot of people have asked me this question both on Instagram and on YouTube, so I thought I'll go ahead and just make a video strictly on just emergency nurse practitioner. But before we get started, please give it a big thumbs up, a big like, subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the content that I post, and leave any comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any ideas of future videos to make. All right, let's get started. So what kind of nurse practitioner could work in the emergency department? I see this debated a lot in my comments and in forums and between discussion of uh, nurses. So in the emergency department, the far majority of nurse practitioners are board certified family nurse practitioners. And this is because most emergency departments see patients of all ages. So as the saying goes, from cradle to grave. You have to be able to see anyone that walks through the door. Or a board certified emergency nurse practitioner can work obviously in the emergency room and in urgent care settings. And we'll talk a little bit more detail of what an emergency nurse practitioner is in just a little bit. And thirdly, dual certified acute care adult nurse practitioner with an acute care pediatric nurse practitioner. This is a double certification, meaning you'll probably be in school for about four years and you'll be able to see adults and pediatrics uh, in the acute care setting and the emergency department will be perfect for that. Now, there aren't too many people that are dual certified in acute peds and acute adults. Uh, it takes longer. Most people just go for family practice and then get some training to work in the emergency department. I've also seen some nurse practitioners that are dual certified as a family nurse practitioner. Well, you'll have that training to treat patients of all ages but then they'll also get a certification in adult acute care where they'll have a little bit more in-depth uh, acute care training, more procedural training. In your acute care program, you'll learn how to intubate, do chest tubes, do a thoracentesis, uh, paracentesis. You'll also learn how to treat patients that are admitted inside the hospital. So that combination works really well for nurse practitioners working in the emergency department. Nurse practitioners that typically do not work in the emergency department are those that are solely just certified as an acute care nurse practitioners. Now there are some emergency departments that separate the adult and pediatrics where there's a standalone adult uh, emergency department and a standalone pediatric emergency department. So if you're an acute care nurse practitioner that can only see adults, then you could work in those emergency departments uh, that only see adults. Um, but those are a little bit more rare. For the pediatric emergency department, if you are an acute care pediatric nurse practitioner, then you could work in that, those standalone uh, pediatric emergency departments. But I would say the far majority of emergency departments um, see patients of all ages. That's why most require a family nurse practitioner degree. So I get a lot of questions from nurses whether or not uh, going to school and becoming a family nurse practitioner will set them up adequately to work in the emergency department. Uh, so in the family nurse practitioner track, the school is actually meant for more of the outpatient care like family practice um, or even the urgent care setting. Um, our training is not exactly uh, tailored to working in the emergency department, although when I was in uh, family nurse practitioner school, I did do rotations in the emergency department. However, most schools uh, prefer that you stick to the fast track area with lower acuity. We definitely do get urgent care experience, but for the higher acuity patients in the emergency department, Typically, uh, you won't get that uh, in-depth training in your family nurse practitioner school. It would require further education in postgraduate. So there are three main ways that you can get additional training uh, to be a competent emergency nurse practitioner. Number one, and this is the most common, on-the-job training. So when I started my emergency department NP job, my group had a nurse practitioner orientation uh, program. So if you were a new graduate nurse practitioner and coming working with us, you would have a six month uh, orientation where for three months you're working side by side with another nurse practitioner or a PA. So every shift you're working, you're with a PA or nurse practitioner. That way you're there, you can go at your own pace, you can bounce questions off each other and not be worried about keeping up with the pace of the emergency department. Instead, you focus on those three months of just learning and there's additional written material that you learn from. Then the additional three months of orientation, you're provided more educational materials and you're working your own shifts, but you have a physician there always by your side in case you need any questions. For me, I already had experience as a nurse practitioner. So my orientation in the emergency department was four months. So two months with another nurse practitioner or PA, and then two months on my own with additional material. Now this helps a lot because you get that extra training 
makes you feel more competent and more ready to go ahead and see patients on your own when you're done. You're not just kind of thrown in there and expected to perform at the level of other experienced nurse practitioners. The second way is going to a program that has a dual FMP and emergency nurse practitioner certification. Now I know Vanderbilt does that. There may be one other program, but there aren't too many. And in this program, you'll be certified as a family nurse practitioner, but you also get extra training uh, in the emergency department and emergency medicine. So you'll learn those advanced procedures, you'll have rotations in the emergency department, and then once you graduate, you can go ahead and sit for your emergency nurse practitioner boards through the AAMP, become dual certified as an emergency nurse practitioner and a family nurse practitioner. Now there are also post master certificate in becoming an emergency nurse practitioner uh, where you take uh, classes and you have extra clinicals in the emergency department. Similar to the dual FMP and EMP program, this program you'll already be a family nurse practitioner, but when you graduate with this post master certificate, you can go ahead and sit down for your emergency nurse practitioner boards and you'll be board certified in both. And third, and I think this is by far the best way to get uh, training and be a competent nurse practitioner is doing a one year emergency medicine fellowship. Now these fellowships, they're available throughout the US. I think last time I checked, there are about 10 of them. Maybe there, there are more now, uh, but it's a one year fellowship, both for nurse practitioners and physician assistants. You essentially do a one year residency similar to physicians, but yours is only one year and you go through different specialties and you learn procedures and you work alongside physicians throughout the whole year. So you're getting tremendous amount of experience and it's two birds in one stone because right now the market is very saturated. It's hard to get into the emergency department. So this fellowship, not only does it give you amazing training, but you'll come out with that fellowship and you'll have one year experience under your belt to help you land a job in the emergency department. You'll also be eligible to sit down for the emergency nurse practitioner uh, certification if you do the fellowship program. The reason why I say I think fellowship is the best way to go because number one, you're getting that one year experience. It's not just a working experience, it's a teaching experience, which makes a big difference because the people that you're working with are there to teach you. They're there to show you different procedures. You're round in their different departments. So you get a very well-rounded experience. And you also get to sit down for emergency nurse practitioner certification. So you'll be very well prepared once you graduate. Now let's look at the AAMP, the American Association of Nurse Practitioners and see what exactly a emergency nurse practitioner is. Okay, so this is AAMP. Are you considering your career as an emergency nurse practitioner? Um, so what is a uh, EMP? So EMP is a board certified advanced practice nurse, treats patients of all ages in the emergency department or urgent care facility in collaboration with the interdisciplinary team. So interdisciplinary team just means that there'll be physicians there, there'll be nurses, and you're all working together. EMP practice in uh, emergency departments, trauma centers, critical access hospitals, and urgent care facilities. Um, so when you think of your large metropolitan uh, trauma centers, those are usually in the downtowns, level one or level two trauma centers. Many doctors working at a time, you'll see a lot of residents, you'll see nurse practitioners, everyone kind of working together. Uh, critical access hospitals are more rural, smaller hospitals. A lot of times uh, nurse an experienced emergency nurse practitioner will work in those critical access hospitals and be the sole provider. So you're, you are doing everything. You're intubating, you're doing chest tubes, you're seeing all the patients. Um, you're transferring patients, and those critical access hospitals are usually small, they see less patients, and they're in the rural areas. So here, even the American Association of Nurse Practitioners also agrees with what I said. Most emergency MPs are family nurse practitioners who obtain additional emergency specialty education, either through completion of an academic or postgraduate fellowship program, or through on-the-job training and continuing education. Exactly what we discussed earlier. The so nurses interested in becoming an emergency nurse practitioner uh, and board certified must first obtain certification as a family nurse practitioner. So right there, the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners stated that if you wanna be a board certified emergency nurse practitioner, you have to also be a family nurse practitioner. So for those nurse practitioners that are thinking about doing acute care, you probably can never become a board certified emergency nurse practitioner in the future because AAMP, which is a certifying body, they require you to be a family nurse practitioner first. Okay, so let's look at the qualifications to be a board certified emergency nurse practitioner. 
Option number one, you have to have 2,000 hours working as a nurse practitioner in the emergency department. You have to have 100 hours of continuing education that pertains to emergency medicine and a minimum of 30 hours specifically procedural education. Option number two, complete an academic emergency care graduate or postgraduate MP program from an accredited nursing program. And number three, which I think is the best, is completion of an approved emergency fellowship program. Now just do a quick Google search and see what emergency nurse practitioner fellowship programs are available. So my typical day in the emergency department uh, is usually a 10 hour shift. Uh, when I start my shift, I go ahead and sign on. I see what patients are waiting in the waiting room um, and I go ahead and start picking up patients. So we have the autonomy of pretty much seeing uh, any patient that we, we feel comfortable in the emergency department. We usually leave the very critical patients, like those that need active resuscitation, like chest tubes and intubation and active CPR for the physician. Well, besides that, we're free to see any patient that we want. Most of the time, I see the patient all by myself. I have the physician there available if I have any questions. If I need the physician to go in and see the patient, they're available to do that, but most of the time, I just ask a quick question if I have any to the physician and I manage everything else myself. So I go in, I see the patient, I do the whole physical exam, go back, I chart on the patient, order whatever tests I need, lab work, medication, imaging, then I go ahead and wait for the results. In the emergency department, a lot of times the results can take one to two hours to come back. So in the meantime, we're not just sitting down, we have to go see other patients. So while I'm waiting for that, I go, see another patient and the whole process you know starts all over again and a lot of times you can you can have five to six patients that you're seeing at the same time you have to be able to multitask and juggle managing all those patients at the same time and then follow up once the results come back and make a decision whether you can go ahead and treat the patient send them home or if they need to stay in the night in the hospital because they're really sick it is a very fast-paced environment you get to do a lot of procedures, you see a lot of interesting things. Every day is different. If you like to stay on your feet, be very hands-on, and have a good amount of autonomy, then emergency department may be good for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of gave you a little bit of clarification of what it takes to be a nurse practitioner in the emergency department. Uh, please give it a big thumbs up, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.